uniform that you're looking at right now is completely different from the one on the show. We wanted to design a suit that felt like a, a power suit that had some strength. We really wanted something much more exciting, and so they've been recreated really to look like armor. We're upgrading them so that they're not just spandex. Uh oh. They actually look more, uh. Just like shields, like armor. Like armor plating. So it's pretty cool. We're in trouble. And we're actually giving them a three dimensional insignia. <laughs> They just look more battle ready. We have two different outfits here. We have this uh, ninja, like a ninja outfit. The helmets are a little bit more 3D. They're not so round. The helmets are um, a head cast of the person themselves. And from there, we um, have sculpted the entire helmet on them, on the head cast. The helmets have different uh, devices on them, like OptiScan devices, what they're called. Um, where like my helmet will have a little eyepiece that comes over the eye, and it helps me to see like an infrared and see behind walls. And the fact that we've had to be very physical, we've done like a lot of our own stunts. Catch the makeup. Team Bravo, Walter, take two. They're all very good at gymnastics and martial arts. The actual cast is so talented and they do uh, the majority of their own martial arts and, and acrobatics. God, we're different. We won't fail. Please, Fatal. It was my goal in this movie to stay away from uh, an excessive violence and go more with gimmicks and gags. <laughs> That was close. Kids are flipping over in the, through the air and flying up into the air. And we have these like Ivan clones that we fight and they're, uh, and they're pretty cool because when you destroy them, they hit the wall and splatter and turn the ooze. It's pretty cool. Martial arts in general gives you the discipline and the confidence and the self-respect. Later, dudes! <laughs> it's all fantasy. You know, when we morph, it's fantasy. The um, thought behind the design was to do a sequence that didn't have any computer animation. Don't quite get that tight in the end. To do it all practical. Lifting him up! It was going to be our one special effects sequence in the movie that was done practically. With a, with a real life-size dinosaur. Something different that had uh, the live effect. Nothing with uh, computer animation. What is this place? Looks like some kind of graveyard. So we built this monster and it was 16 feet long by 12 or 15 feet tall. Took it out to the real jungle uh, and had about 15 guys operating it off to the side and hung it, through, hung it on cables through the trees and got it to move. It was my job to design a sequence that we could do quickly, easily, and make it look believable. I designed a sequence that better special effects. You know, the bad guy, Ivan Ooze, is a shapeshifter. So he actually can, through computer graphics, change his form and become anything he wants. And so some of the monsters he creates work the same way. An animator is given a shot. And again, the shot starts from a storyboard that the director has conceived. We have to create them and make them come alive ends of the wings have uh, rockets because the falcon has these rockets he fires at his enemies. Storyboards show some sort of flight going directly at the camera and uh, there's a brief description about how the falcon wings uh, go forward and out of the tips of the falcon wings come uh, missiles. What I've done is I've, I've built a 
computer model, what we call wireframe, of the Falcon. After that's built, we take that model and we start to define what it's going to look like. We, we give it a surface and we give it a texture. The way we find out if it works is that we take the frames from the film of the background without any monster and we add our computer generated monster, Marriott, via something we call compositing on top of that. This is a background frame um, that is shot of the model city. This Falcon has been animated so that it, it appears to move down this corridor of buildings. And what's happening is it's actually folding its wings and pointing them towards the camera. Once the camera, camera move is matched and the Falcon is put into the scene, at this point all it would take is some very um, subtle changes to different elements to sort of massage them in. But this is basically what it will look like. Falcon Sword is back in the game. Adam, disengage! I've got shot! All yours! <laughs> Alright, big guy. Lights out for you. Rockets away! We need Ninja Megazord power, now! My job is to create the Megazord. And that means taking all the Zords that all the Power Rangers are using and putting them all together and making the final Megazord. As you can see in this program, he's still three-dimensional. And I've put all the pieces together and the Falcon will go on the back eventually. And the final Megazord is going to look something like this. And it has all the different Zords on it. This is Billy's Zord and he's the wolf. And so my job is to take the Zords and mightily morph them like this and turn them into the arms for the Megazord. We'll inject life into him so that he'll look like a real character and not just a, a little robot. Good, good, keep going. Good. <laughs> it's hard, to, hard for me to operate the rope and pull you around at the same time. <laughs> it's dope. Hi. Jeff Pruitt. Here we are. <laughs> Love you, man. <laughs> beautiful. So when do I get beautiful. to jump out of the helicopter? Oh, would you like to hang off the crane today? Zoom in. Yeah. yeah. 
super zoom. <laughs> Feeling. <laughs> you with your hair no. in the curlers. <laughs> Okay, Hey, camera's rolling. This shift to another shift to your spreader bar right there. To another shift down to either, you know, the cap stand hoises? Yeah. One, two, three, go. Hey, you're doing 
two, three. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Good. Good. Can they bring her back in the same shot? Okay. Okay. So, you know, she goes up. Yeah, that's okay. But do you have your... Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Mike. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> you don't have to. Here we see Ivan Ooze and Goldar, well, after him anyway, as they wait for the Zords to arrive in the next
What we see here is the night backdrop for Andrew Grove Tower, designed to look like a nightscape of the city. It is lit from behind. Well, as you can see, that one didn't work. Um, we'll try that again, shall we? What we're about to see here is Ivan Ooze introducing the world to his new monsters, which are named Hornitor and Scorpicron. There are actually digital effects which are added to this to provide the lightning which emanates from his fingers, which create the seven monsters below. On this set, a giant green screen was also utilised for some shots to allow the digital effects to be superimposed atop of the live action. Here we will see Goldar and Ivan react to the non-existent Zords as they swoop by them in the sky. Of course, the sky actually consists of nothing more than a green screen, and those digital effects are superimposed on later. And later in this video, we'll actually see the other half of what goes on during this particular scene as the pink one flies by.
at all. Yeah. Buttons actually work. But ladies and gentlemen, the Mega Zord. sitting in Yellow Ranger's chair. Uh, used to be known as Trini, now known as Isha. Over here you can see someone a pan over there, um, a number of other chairs sitting there. And we are going to look at Megazord. Uh, we've spent the last six weeks working on. So I'll now get up out of Isha's chair and leave Alicia Karen Ashley, whatever her name is to her um, business and we shall go into the Megazord. Some people, or many kids, will shortly come to know it as Megazord. The movie version. Uh, we work off diagrams such as this, which our lovely American designer, Mr. Craig Stearns and Axel has arranged. And here's the result. Probably the most impressive display you're going to see for a while. These particular units here are what we call checkerboards. Now they have 144 lamps in them each and there's six of them here in Megazord. And they have 24 different states which they rotate around. I'll show you the controller for those shortly. All these buttons here operate off 24 volt. All these other things here operate off 12 volt. There's two 40 volt switches. There's goodness knows what. There's back and perspex devices. And there's hundreds and hundreds of buttons here keyboards flashing and these little units are another one of our things which um, which Craig Stearns insisted that we come up with and so we did it's basically a very large version of a graphic analyzer box with the meters going up and down in actual fact what it does what it's supposed to do in your imagination is control Megazord's foot position and indicate the various positions of the body or the uh, the Megazord whilst it's in action. Okay, um, I'm currently sitting or standing, because the seat hasn't been installed yet, I'm standing in Blue Ranger's position. Uh, Billy, David Yost is the actor. Uh, none of the real actors actually operate in this thing, they uh, use the stunt actors. The blue stunt actor is actually David Wald. So he'll be sitting in here being thrown around and having pyrotechnics thrown at him. In the middle here, we have lovely Kimberly's position, Pink Ranger. She gets to have a look at all these lovely numbers flashing away at her, another one of those things that they insisted we do, so we did, a great paint. And she pushes all these buttons and she sits here. You will notice, of course, the hole which we've cut in the bottom of the floor because this lower section of Megazord is very difficult to get into with the uniforms on. So they've cut a little trap door in so they can crawl up there instead of having to climb down. Uh, over here, Red Ranger's position. Uh, Rocky, I believe now, it used to be... Uh, you'll notice that some of this stuff isn't actually fixed in position yet. Sort of backlit. Anyway. Um, yes, same deal once again, basically a mirror reflection of Billy's position. Uh, you'll notice these little things up here, another one of Axel's little discoveries actually alarm panels which we've wired up to look the way they do. There's two computer screen monitors which go in here on each side. They haven't been installed yet. Okay, keep rolling. You'll jump up. This is what you have to do if you're not arranging to get around there as well. You have to climb. That's what I'm sick of doing for all the week. You bump your head on the like this. Uh, we are now in Black Ranger's position. Uh, Black Ranger is Adam used to be Zach. Um, and once again, you can see a myriad of controls that Zach has at his easy availability. Okay, up the top here in the middle, and I'll get the cameraman to climb down. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Yes, I will. So we'll just cut for a second. Camera rolling, sound rolling, and action. I think that's what they say. I know that's what they say because I've sat on this set for hours and hours and hours and that's what they yell all the time. Okay, just here, uh, you probably saw it a short while ago, actually, that's chucking out a lot of heat, Pete. 
I'll tell you what, there's a fair bit of melting going on actually. <laughs> I might go and turn it back. Uh, this thing here is what we know as Isha's button, Yellow Ranger's button. During the movie, um, when they're out in space fighting the Hornitor, or no, the Scorpatron, Ivan, Ooze, Scorpatron, whatever, um, she has to reach over, she's sitting in her chair here, she has to reach over and break a bit of glass and pull that up, and it has to light up at the same time, so it's wired it up to do so. Um, when it does, uh, Megazord's foot comes up and basically kicks butt, shall we say. So that's the special kick butt switch for use of Yellow Ranger. Okay, once again, Yellow Ranger also has at her disposal, and things are starting to get warm here now, so we might shut down shortly. We have to shut down when they're not actually filming, because uh, things get a bit warm in here. Uh, once again, two more checkerboards, various controls, lots of it 24 volt, total 71 different things going on in here at any one time, electrically. So, let's go outside and have a look at the uh, business end of this set up and find out how it all works. Cut. Alright, okay, this is one half of Megazord's control centre, um, or action centre, or whatever you like to call it. This particular mechanical device here um, is what drives those checkerboards. As you can see, a heap of cams going around, a motor driving it, a heap of power supplies. Very primitive, but it works. This was actually found in a junk heap. Further down here, we have a specially designed box which we built. I've noticed one of the relays is playing up on already. We haven't even started filming yet. Um, that's what drives those graphic boxes. Um, yeah, you can hear it going crazy too. Various chasers and other devices there, which are all wired up in a big haphazard mess. That wire there is hot. Um, because it's driving those checkerboards, which have got a lot of lamps in them. Um, How many the lamps? Of things, 144 lamps per thing. There's about 800 lamps all up. Okay, some of them terminate on these chrome blocks here and then go into what we call the mess, which you'll see in a cut, which I'll edit in the thing later on. There's a whole heap of mess there. Four things. You see here the other half of um, Megazord's control centre, basically a whole stack of chasers. There's two 24 volters, a 24 volt 8 channel relay chaser, which you can hear clicking away there, and another 240 volt 8 channel chaser. Now these things here um, are hidden away, they're what's called ballast lamps. They're used to um, provide ballast for the neon lamps which are inside Megazord. And they're driven by one of the chasers. All that stuff is um, part of Megazord gimbal, as you can see. It's, it's hydraulically controlled. Controlled by large pipes. They actually connect to huge tanks which sit about here. They've got controls. And we can tilt it either way. These are big truck um, big universal joints out of trucks which have been welded on there, the giant one in the middle there. So you can tilt either way or whatever the shape may be. Makes it look very realistic. I shall now demonstrate for all you people here. I know you want to see me do this. Um, how a Power Ranger enters in your turds or dicks or you'll notice that I am in the wrong chair. I know this is Aisha's chair. And I know that's Tommy's position, but that's tough. This is the movie for you, so um, there's actually ropes help you with her to do this, but I'm going to do it myself, so basically action, and rolls in, those doors close, that's it, they close, and then roll in somewhere like this, uh, what is it, um, Kia, um, activating weapon systems, it's morphin time, and there you go, that's it. Happy now? This is all controlled from the outside. There's guys strapped on the side to do this. That opens up. And then we have to make sure we don't roll off the edge.
Here we get to see the view that most crew on set actually get to see. It's shown from the camera crane video split and this is what we used for most of our cues when operating the low voltage lights inside. You will of course notice the presence of Tommy in this one, the white rain will be in the rear centre. Alright, what you are seeing here is very rare. It's samples from a company called VIFX Digital in the USA. This is how the digital world sees the Zords. Add the live action cockpit and some plate shots of the city and Voila Power Rangers. However, to do this takes about six months, several hundred thousand dollars per sequence and a heck of a lot of patience. Rolling? Yeah. Alright, okay, what we have here is a haunter's foot. Um, this thing here fills up with ooze of the purple variety. And what basically live action build, they do various things in the chemical plant with it. It doesn't squash anyone. I haven't actually seen what it does yet, I haven't seen the film that stuff, but um, there it is anyway. It's full size, you can compare my size to it if you wish. I'm not going to climb under there because I don't trust that roof. Bottles of ooze here ready to um, Here which we've had great pains to get. Um, this particular prop here we are really keen to get. And it's actually a railway C frame from Cowra Railway Station. And it had to be removed from Cowra Railway Station, but all the way up here. By the way, it has to go back to Cowra Railway Station too. And there's another couple of them over here. Various lever frames from New South Wales Government Railway stock. 